All right, and then let's just touch on two um, uh, two unusual hemangiomas, and then we'll have time for a few questions. This, um, for those of you who have seen this, you recognize it almost instantly. But if you've never seen this lesion before and don't know about it, you might really struggle with what this infiltrative-looking uh, lesion that has little vascular spaces infiltrating between collagen bundles into the deep dermis. You might struggle and think that this is Kaposi's sarcoma or some sort of malignancy because it's infiltrative growth. Looking closer, you can see that there are kind of spindled cells here and very thin, almost slit-like compressed vascular channels. Here's a closer look, kind of spindly again. Very, there certainly is some features here that um, can can be reminiscent of Kaposi's sarcoma. Uh, you have almost no atypia, very few mitoses, and usually the blood is confined to the little vascular spaces, and wrap, and you don't usually have much extravasation of red cells or um, or a hemosiderin deposition like you would have in Kaposi. Here's another look. So this is a microvenular hemangioma. So it's an unusual variant of hemangioma. It's totally benign, but because of its infiltrative growth and slit-like channels, it can mimic Kaposi sarcoma. And so the things that you know we talked a, a little bit about there, there are some variety of features that can help you distinguish it from Kaposi. If you have any doubt, just do an HHV8 immunostain and that will sort it out. But I find the lack of extravasation of red cells, the lack of mitoses, which Kaposi almost always has mitoses, um, and also the lack of inflammation in plasma cells. Kaposi almost always has plasma cells, and microvenular hemangioma usually does not. And again, the clinical history and appearance are very helpful in sorting this out too. Kaposi has very unique clinical appearance or um, scenario um, as opposed to this tumor. So uh, microvenular hemangioma is benign, but can get confused with Kaposi sarcoma.